Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new webinar. We're here with Ruby Powers from Powers Law Group, and we're going to talk about President Biden's new actions to promote family unity. So Ruby, she's a board certified immigration and nationality attorney. She has been licensed since 2008, so a little bit more than 15 years, and she founded the firm in November of 2009. So Ruby, the word is yours. Thank you, Maria. So this is really exciting because this program was announced on uh, June 18th, 2024, so not too long ago. And it got, we'd sort of heard rumors that something like this was going to happen, but you never know until it happens. Um, and so they announced it in mid-June. And basically, a lot of their qualifications had to have been met by the day before, June 17th, 2024. And so the point of this is to promote family unity. And the, the idea is that it's going to impact maybe half a million spouses to U.S. citizens and about 50,000 stepchildren. And so uh, basically what they're going to do is on a case by case basis, they're going to uh, um, review a parole in place from certain non-citizen spouses who've been in the U.S. for at least a decade. So uh, 10 years as of June 17, 2024. And if granted, they can apply. Um, the idea is that you, with that parole, you would have um, something that would be a tool for you to apply for legal permanent residency if you all else thing you have all meet all the other qualifications. So it doesn't actually need an automatic green card. No, 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 that's not what it means. But it can provide a work authorization um, and states that need status to have a driver's license like Texas that can give you to uh, provide you a path to driver's license, etc. So we are doing an updated video because and webinar because they gave out more details and said now the applications are going to be accepted starting August 19th, which is not too far away. Um, August 19th, it is a Monday, 2024. Um, so you can't submit before, that's the earliest. And um, we are waiting for the Federal Register as of this, um, this recording, we're waiting for the a register to come out with more details. So let's go back and talk about the key t uh, requirements, right? So you had to have been in the U.S. without admission or parole. Um, you also have to have continuously be present in the U.S. for at least a 10 years as of June 17, 2024. And uh, you also have to have a legally valid marriage to U.S. citizen as of June 17, 2024 and not have any disqualifying criminal history or pose a threat to national security or public safety. Now, uh, we don't have an exact detail what all those uh, level of crimes, but we've heard and more details will come be forthcoming. Um, I think that as long as you weren't inadmissible, um, that you should be fine, but it is also a, a case discretionary case by case basis. And then you meet a favorable exercise of discretion. The other great thing is that this can be for stepchildren as well, who uh, might not have been eligible some other way um, and who um, can, this will provide them an opportunity to have that legal parole as well. Uh, they estimate about 50,000 stepchildren that could be qualified. Now the application, the details will come out with the federal register um, and then um, the, and we'll, they'll let us know more about the application and, and everything. But what we can do at this moment is we can be preparing. So gathering evidence of the, um, the marriage, of the citizenship status of your spouse, of the documentation identity, like birth certificate, government issued ID, passport, evidence of spouse's citizenship, uh, is it through birth certificate? Is it through naturalization? Documentation establishing continuous presence in the U.S. for at least 10 years as of June 17th, like we said. But, you know, is it two or three pieces of evidence per year? That's what we're aiming for um, to help establish that that evidence. And that takes time. We This is giving me memories back to when we were preparing for DACA. Uh, 12 years ago and trying to collect that evidence. So um, for children, proof of the relationship, um, valid marriage, and the, the child's presence in the U.S. So we also are heavily suggesting to create a MyUSCIS account. In the meantime, doesn't take too long to do that um, because we're hoping to apply online. Um, and we're, this is, we're thinking it's going to be very similar to the other I-13 um, with other parole programs that um, have been announced over the last couple of years where you can submit it online. 
Um, so just make sure to know you can't submit anything before the official start date. Um, we are um, we are actually starting to um, st to take cases to get ready since we're only a couple of weeks away, um, and we are giving a lot of um, information to the um, prospective clients and and those um, about like what could possibly happen with possible litigation um, that things could be um, stopped you know, somewhere along the way. So. You know we're we're trying to explain all of that as we as we move forward, but we also want to be ready so that we can be ready to apply as soon as possible, as soon as the the gates open on August nineteenth, twenty twenty four. Um, so be aware of um the of, of potential scams and be cognizant of like who's, you know, who you might hire or who you're talking to about this process. I know that this is great. It sounds all. Awesome. Um, what we're doing right now is screening, um, giving homework to people to collect, and if they want to hire us already, we're going to um, get started. And um, but this is just want to get this information out there. So the other thing that's important to note is that the parole doesn't solve everything, but it can give you an opportunity for a pathway to legal permanent residency. Uh, we still have to screen for other what they call inadmissibilities or blemishes or issues that could keep you from legal permanent residency, like a permanent bar, for example. Also, if you were in immigration court, there that's a little more complicated. Um, so we need to evaluate your case and see if there's a way to do a motion to reopen. Um, but there's a lot of movement going on right now, a lot of excitement. So I would say have a consult, evaluate your case and get prepared. Um, and the more information we have when we evaluate or whoever evaluates your case, the better. So um, thanks so much for watching. We, you can find us so many different ways from TikTok to Instagram to, to X to Facebook. And we do have a newsletter in English and Spanish every other week. You can reach us at 713-589-2085. Um, and we have a team of multiple attorneys that can help assist you. Um, so August is going to be a nice and hot month over here in Houston. Um, but I love the watermelon image, um, favorite summer food, right? Um, so we we're talking about Biden today and parole program. And then we're also going to be talking about the TN visa, uh, 245I and, um, later the T visa, which is the victims of human trafficking. So, Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Definitely share um, with a friend, a neighbor, um, and we're also available to come communicate with your, um, speak to your church or your community, your school, um, your place of worship, wherever we want to be there for you and um, at this time. Thanks.